Yeah, I don't know whether, Todd, do you think it's partly because of the, the virtual aspect of it? It's slowing us down or do you think it's just the volume or, or what? I think it's the, it's the volume. I mean, what are there? There are 11 items on the agenda, I think, or in the just in the public notice part. So I think there are 15. Oh, wow. Oh, well, there are 11 new ones here, plus some that are carried over. So it'll have to be, we'll have to move chop chop this, this evening. <laughs> Chairwoman, yeah. Chairman will zip it right along. Yeah, we'll move it right along. But I don't think <laughs> she hears this at the moment. She looks perplexed. Hello, Sarah. Definitely not. There she is. She's there now. Can't hear you. You can't hear us? We can hear you now. Yeah, I was just sitting out here. Uh, look at the bunny. Oh, wow, they look like the bunny. Yeah. 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 Sunny and perfect, and, and but today was more like overcast, and now it looks like we could get Who's that? a 20% chance of rain. Oh, tonight. Lynn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just got close the door. Lynn's sitting out talking to her brother in California. <laughs> Hi, Eric. How you doing? Eric, say something. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Once we're all here, I'll go on mute. Hopefully we get Sarah back. Yeah, it kicked me out at first. I don't know why. Eric, I talked I talked to Susan today and she sent another acerbic email and a voicemail, but I still don't think she's heard anything. Okay. Um, Randy sent me the guy's email too, so it's okay with you. I'm gonna follow up. Yeah, I'd send send him an email. Okay. Do I show up full size to everybody? Because when I look at my picture of myself here, I'm like only. No, Don, up. you're seriously cropped. Yeah, yeah. Don, you're in uh, portrait mode. <clears throat> All right. Uh, switch to active speaker. Hmm. Webinar settings. Can you hear us now, Sarah? Not yet. Uh, we are. We we could hear her talking before, though, right? No, I don't think we are. I, I couldn't. <clears throat> mm, we can do anything. Can anyone hear me? Now, now I, I can. can. <laughs> okay, but I can't hear you, so that's a problem. Uh oh. Um, maybe this will work. Hello. Yeah, we can still hear you. Nothing. Can you hear us?
Is, is my picture still up there? Because I yeah, but it. you're you're still um, cropped. I have no idea how to fix that. Well, yeah, you're not missing much. <laughs> fine, yeah. I can't see all of that window behind you, Don. Uh -huh. Is Linda going to be on today, Peter? She was supposed to be. I saw her in the office. She said she was going to be. <clears throat> oh, here she is. All right, here we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Sorry about that. I've been having difficulty uh, joining in. We can hear you, Linda. Can't oh, see good. you. Oh, good. All right. Your You'll... video must not be on. There we go. Oh, OK. There you go. So, go. Um, so I was going to say that Heather is not going to be here this evening. And I didn't know if anyone else was aware of that. We are now. OK, good. So you to... Mark doesn't have to mute himself, I'm thinking. Hello, Mark. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm all moved into my new house. Oh, good. Oh, good. Is that the one out on Noank Road? Yes. Yeah, good. Yeah, we're very excited to be there. Heather is glad to return to her homeland. <laughs> um, and uh, I managed to beat down a few of my other people who like to have meetings on Tuesday nights. <laughs> Do you want me to bring in all the panel, uh, the attendees into the panel? So they'd be up yeah, on the screen. That would be great. All right, I'll start doing that right now. Okay, this should be everybody brought in. Right. Do you want to <clears throat> do your spiel? Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. This meeting of the Historic District Commission will take place in a webinar format through Zoom. The chair of the commission is Sarah Moriarty. The host of the webinar is the building official. Staff attending this meeting include Peters of English, Seamus Quinn, and Linda Galetta. Anyone speaking should state their names prior to speaking each time. The panelists in this webinar meeting will be the commission members and the building staff. Panelists who would like to comment on an item should indicate by using the icon to raise hand at the bottom of the screen. After a panelist raises their hand, they will be able to comment one at a time when called upon by the chairperson. Panelists should mute their microphones until called upon. To make a motion or second a motion, commission members can raise a hand and be acknowledged by the host or chair. To vote on a motion, commission members will be called upon individually by the chair to vote. The public can participate in the meeting during the public communications agenda item. The public will be asked to raise their hand during the public communications if they want to speak at this time by using the icon to raise hand at the bottom of the screen. The public will be called upon by the host one at a time and will be able to speak during this time. Attendees must identify themselves before speaking. Attendees can also submit any comments in writing to the building department after the meeting for consideration on any items discussed tonight. And that is it. Thank you. So I will call the meeting to order on July 7th at 7.09, and I will take a roll call. Uh, Sarah Moriarty here. Don Levinson. Here. Mark Summers. Here. Todd Brady. Here. Eric Goodman. Here. Linda Galetta. Here. Peter Zvengalis. Here. All right. We don't need to seat. Actually, um, I can seat a sub, so I'm going to seat uh, Summers for Genicopolis. Um, and, uh, Todd, do you want to read the call? Do you have that? Sure. I've got it. Okay. And, um, Peter, you want me to read this extra paragraph at the bottom this time? Yeah. Okay. Dear Michelle, please publish the following public notice for one insertion on Monday, June 29, 2020. Town of Groton notice of public hearing, historic district commission. 
The Historic District Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 7th, 2020 at 7 p.m. virtually via the Zoom platform to hear the following applications requesting a certificate of appropriateness. HDC 20-43, 54 West Main Street, BAB 26 Realty, LLC owner, Lori Fine and applicant signage, pin number 26191830795. HCC 20-44, 291 291-293 High Street, J. Del Grosso, owner applicant, Stone Wall, pin number 26194321536. HCC 20-45, 5 Water Street, SIF Real Estate, LLC, owner applicant, signage, pin number 26191830-8613. HCC 20-46, 89 High Street, Cynthia Warren and Craig Warren, owners, applicants, remove fence. Pin number 26191830 HCC 20-47, 171 Candlewood Road, Wellspring Bible Fellowship, owner applicant. Condensers and line sets, pin number 17902081894E. HCC 20-48, 12 Water Street, Factory Square, LLC owner. Todd Brady applicant, exterior renovations, pin number 26191830 HDC 20-49, 340 Packer Road, Harpoon Realty Group, LLC, owner applicant, extend garage, pin number 27101323265. HDC 20-50, six Fort Rachel Place, John Gordon and Rose Corbett, owner's applicants, install generator, pin number 26180639296. A Zoom meeting link will be posted to the town's website meetings calendar or can be attended by visiting www.zoom.us webinar ID 8173009 password for, password 412638 or by phone 1-312-626-6799. Applications are on <laughs> available for public inspection during normal business hours at the planning department. 134 Groton Long Point Road, Groton, Connecticut, dated this 29th day of June 2020 at Groton, Connecticut, Todd Brady Secretary. Thank you, Todd. So we have four continued hearings. I don't know if anyone's here for them. The first one is 54 West Main Street, Bad 26 Realty. Anybody here for that one? Linda, you had said they had, they had talked to you about putting in an application? So this is the one for movement mortgage that was put right. in by One Look Sign. And I believe Lori Finnan or Finan is supposed to be um, um, coming before you for a signed permit tonight, okay. this evening, in public hearing. Okay. Uh, Lori, are you here? Okay, it just says we're unmuted. I'm sorry? This is, hello, can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay. but you unmuted us, but we're not Lori. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, are there any other phone numbers, Peter, that that uh, might be Lori? I don't see them, just that one. All right, so we'll go back to it in case she comes. The next one's 56 West Main Street. Mr. Rouchard? Here. All right. You are coming back and from the walk-in cooler, so you have the floor. In attendance with me is Stephen Nusopoulos. Um, to take lead on the presentation. Okay, go ahead. And can you unmute him? I believe he, I saw him in attendance. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yeah, I hear yeah. you, Stephen. Awesome. Um, again, my name is uh, Stefan Nishopoulos. Uh, I'm an architect in Norwich. Um, I'm working with Bob in uh, installing a new walk-in cooler um, in the back portion of Mystic Pizza. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with the restaurant. It's a very, very busy restaurant. And uh, because of it, he uh, requires to have quite a few deliveries because of the lack of storage. Uh, by introducing the cooler, uh, he expands his storage capability and which is great because it's gonna minimize the number of deliveries and trucks coming into the area. By introducing the cooler, we're also providing a screen so we can hide it from the street. Uh, I believe uh, 
I don't see the drawings, but I believe you have the drawings already. Besides the cooler in the back of it, there's quite a bit of other mechanical equipment, which also will be screened by the screen itself that we're introducing. Um, we looked at quite a few different ways of uh, screening it. Uh, we looked at composite, we looked at vinyl. We finally decided on wood um, because again of the traffic in the delivery area and it's gonna be, you know, we, we, we don't want it to be uh, broken by uh, delivery people coming in. Uh, so if it's wood, what you're seeing now is the existing picture. And on the right hand side, you see the uh, superimposed screen with the walking cooler in the background of it. Um, because of the heavy deliveries, uh, we didn't want to go with composite or vinyl because uh, when it's broken, it looks a mess. Uh, wood is more stirable, so we use a six by six posts. Uh, if, it, if they nick it or if they bang it, we can touch it up. Where vinyl, it's very difficult to do that uh, and maintain it. So basically, it's a very, very simple project. Uh, introducing the working cooler and we're screening it with uh, the screen that we're showing on the, uh, on the drawings. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, it's such a simple thing. Uh, I'm not sure how much I can waste your time other than um, telling you what, what it is about. So any questions or? Is, is that Peter, where you just were, is that an accurate representation of what's gonna be built? Yes, uh, what you saw is a picture of the existing and next to it is a superimposed uh, the screen itself, and you can see the cooler in the background. Right, I, I mean, Peter, if you scroll down. I think Todd was referring to the uh, representation down below. Yes. A sample of somebody that has a similar um, fencing on a yeah, patio or something. Down, down, down. Down a little more. Yeah, that is correct, yes. Uh, what you see on top of it is the elevation of the building itself and how it relates to the elevation of the building in a scale. And below it is an actual representation of it, yes. I saw the other night down on Water Street, there was a patio in back of a house that has some similar uh, um, architecture to that surround, the, uh, that fencing. Obviously, this is the site plan. It shows the location of the cooler in relation to the Mystic Pizza uh, building itself. Um, and we'll try to give you as much as information as possible so you can make a decision on this. So the, the, the screen is just on the, on the west side, is that correct? That is correct, yes. And the reason we're only doing it that way is so we can maintain it. Um, so we can maintain the walking cooler itself, so we can uh, rake leaves from trees behind it instead of surrounding the cooler with a screen. Uh, it, it's easier to get around the cooler and maintain the cooler with providing the screen from the street side only. And is it gonna be green like that around the, uh, the edges? I apologize, green you said? Yeah, it looks like it's green. Yeah, so what we're proposing is like an olive, light olive color green for the main structure and the actual screen itself is like a redwood finish. Does anyone have any other questions for the applicant? No. no. If I may also add that even without the cooler itself, uh, the screen itself does a nice job in hiding the existing uh, mechanical space uh, that's back there now. There's quite a few units that are visible from the street. Uh, this particular screen will also hide those. Thank you. If there are no other, oh, sorry. Does someone have something? So if there's no other questions for the applicant, would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? 
Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC, I don't know what number this is. Are you ready? HBC 20-25 is closed. Um, so the next one, HDC 20-35, 9 Elm Street. Hi, hey guys. It's Cody. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear yes. you. Cody. Go ahead. Cody Blake, Mr. Connecticut. Um, sorry about last time. I had the worst audio, so it was it was giving me a real fit. So sorry about that. If you guys couldn't hear me or you could, I don't know. Um, so the Elm Street, I think last time we didn't have the sizing for the condensers, which we've submitted. So now you guys should have all that. That was all we were missing, right, Cody? Yeah, that's it. It just was this information right here. Yep. Right. Yep. Come down a little farther. Yep, right here. So 33 wide, 34 and a half tall, or five eighths, I'm sorry. And, and this was the unit that you're actually going to strap to the side of the building. Is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? So Mark, just because you weren't here last time, everything was submitted except they didn't have the dimensions of the size of the condenser. So they're going to put it right where um, Peter has the, the arrow. There's line sets that are coming out of the, of the wall already. You get a bit, yep, there you go. You can see the line. <laughs> Is there external conduit going in? Pardon? Is there external conduit going in? It's internal, no external. Perfect. It'll, it'll just it'll just be the condenser. Everything was run behind the wall, inside the walls. Any questions for the applicant? No? No. No. All right. Thank you, Cody. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? <laughs> HDC 20-35 is closed. Uh, HDC 20-41, 17 West Main Street, Steamboat Wharf Condominium. Um, hey, Sarah, sorry, we're here. Oh, there you are. All right, you are all set. The dog speaking for us. For or against the application? We, we, are, we are for the application. <laughs> How about the dog? Yeah, okay. The dog's for it, too. He's absolutely okay. for it. All right. Um, we have purchased uh, the universal package store and we replaced the exterior sign with the um, exact dimensions that were there before. We just changed the logo on the sign. Do we have what the sign's made of? It's composite. Um, not sure the exact material composite, but something that would not deteriorate. Um, and you're using the existing bracket. We didn't change anything other than just the actual, just the science actual sign. Yeah. Yeah. So, what mark? Is it carved or painted? That's not either. Um, that's uh, digitally printed, I believe. It's a vinyl sticker on a piece of wood. 
or composite? Composite. So we need to list in the application what it's made of. Um, I think, assuming that nobody has any objections to the sign, I think that when we get to the um, deliberations that we can just denote that it's approved and that it's a composite material. Does anyone else have any? That sounds like a good idea. Okay, I just don't want to continue them for that. Right. Um, so does anyone have any other questions or concerns over the sign before we close this? No. No? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC um, 20 41 is closed. Uh, HDC 20 43, 54 West Main Street. Oh, they're on here twice. This is Lori Finan again. Has she joined us? No. So she must. Oh, this is her own application. This is what you were talking about, Linda. But she's not here. So I will come back. Uh, HDC 20-44, 291-293 High Street, Day, Jay Delagrosso. I think I just promoted her. Um, oh. I was muted. I was muted. I was trying to talk to you, but I was muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was in the process of flipping her over from attendee to panelist. So I think she's there now. Thank you. Right. I'm here now. Okay, so I, I'm gonna hold on HDC 20-44, I'm gonna jump back to HDC 20-4354 West Main Street, Lori Finan. Thank you. So I am, um, I, the sign that I had put up, I had originally um, put in an application for the Century 21 Shutters and Sales panel, and then I was going to do a, uh, a bulletin board underneath and that just wasn't feasible. So I ended up putting a couple of uh, additional panels, which I understand was uh, I wasn't supposed to do. So now I'm trying to uh, put the application in for the panels as I have um, on there now, as I've made up. And hopefully this will, this is okay. So there are two, um, there's one that's 40 by 26, and that's the, the Century 21 Charters and Sales panel. Then the fine home, there's a fine homes and estates. There we go. Uh, the commercial and the vacation rental. And, and what about the movement mortgage? So we were gonna put them on the bottom um, and uh, right underneath the shutters and sales vacation rentals. And I think that's where we ran into the issue. Um, and I kind of realized that I should have come back to um, the commission. And uh, so right underneath the same size as the, as the commercial, the shutters and sales vacation rentals, the same size right underneath would be the movement mortgage. So I'm just allowing them because they're renting space. I'm just allowing them to kind of come under my sign because there's nowhere else really to put a sign. There's two allowed. There's one. There's uh, the one that the uh, BAB Realty, which is now um, Leatherneck or uh, Bainsley Attorneys, and uh, he's not at this time doing anything with his sign. He, I'm not sure what his plans are. And then we were allowed to, to put another freestanding sign. So really there wasn't another place for movement. So I said that they could come underneath my sign, you know, on, on my sign with, with what I have going on. So Sarah, are, are we just at this point considering an application for approval of the existing sign without movement on it? 
Yes, Movement Mortgage has its own application. Okay. Um, and PIN number. So once if if this one's approved, then they can finally come back and apply for their sign. Don't all the posts and everything all have to get approved too, though? I mean, because it wasn't what was originally. Right. Everything here is different. So this is a brand new application replacing so, their previous one. Okay. So the posts are the same. They should be the same. The posts and the top sign. It was the 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 signs or the panels underneath that I changed because I couldn't come up with a um, a viable bulletin board that opened and closed that would would really stand up to the weather. So you're just going to add another sign below the shutters and sales for the movement mortgage. If they, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm still confused. Are we doing both or just, just this? Movement mortgage has a separate application. I think we're just doing this one, Eric. Yes. No. So <clears throat> before this very involved mock-up, if we can call it that, has been done, what was existing before there were any alterations? I'm trying to pull, so they previously came before us for a sign, which was approved. Um, I'm trying to find it to see if I can send it over to Peter to, to pull up. Because Eric asked about the posts, because if the posts are new, then that just needs to be part of the application. I thought the sizing was different or something. I, I'm not sure why I remember that. I, I think, Sarah, that, I think that the original so sign I, if I'm not mistaken, included the Century 21 at the top between the two posts as they exist now. I believe that the sign, in fact, was a reverse, though. Was it not, Laurie? It was a black background. It was the original. Oh, I don't I don't remember. I it was, it was a different format. And then they added the three signs below at some later date, but they were never approved. Uh, Peter, I just sent you what was approved in your email. If you want Sarah, to hold up. Sarah, if you wanted to, I just made you a co-host. You can actually share a document right from your computer right now if you want. Oh, fancy. How do I do that? Just on the bottom where it says, when, when you open up the bottom, it should say share, uh, new share. Share screen? N new share should be a little next to polls. I have share, share screen. Try, try that. that, yeah. This will stop other screen sharing. Yeah, you'll flip out of this one and you'll go to yours. It should, in theory. <laughs> it's a big attempt we're trying right now. <laughs> okay. Can you see that? Yeah, yes. we can see it. Okay, so that was what was originally, well, that sign was not. Um, but this was what their mock-up and dimensions okay, were. Okay, so it was a different design sign. It was, yeah. Everything was different, the posts. That's how I remembered it, because there was the one sign that was asymmetric. And and Dr. Summers, you're only remembering that because you've missed so many meetings, it's still fresh in your mind. You haven't gotten confused by subsequent events. There, there are advantages to suspending animation. <laughs> it was my first meeting. <laughs> I apologize. This is the one, <laughs> obviously. I thought one of the existing signs actually was painted aluminum, but maybe I was wrong. Um, I don't think so. No, it says aluminum down on the bottom left there. It says aluminum. Oh, oh aluminum yeah. plexiglass windows, Mark. Good memory. Okay, so in fact, this is a wholly new application, correct? Yes, it's a new application, new number, everything. So. So will I need to come back then with the posts as well? Well, well what do you have? Can you go back up, Peter?
is is there anything else? Is there a it also stage grew, that tells us materials and such? It grew a lot in size too. This is an observation. How big was the old sign, Eric? What did it say, sir? 36 by 18 plus 36 plus 30 plus whatever the bottom section was. Yeah, 36 by 18 and then the bottom part was 30, 30 by, sorry, got two screens going. 30 and then the bottom legs were um, three. Well, at the very least, uh, um, I think that the existing application is incomplete um, because we need materials um, and the post to be included. And I don't know if anyone has any comments in regard to how they feel about the aesthetics of the sign. I'm not, I'm not sure what the Zoom equivalent of penciling in and initialing on the application, but I mean, I'd be fine with saying two by four by four or six by six or whatever posts of this length with a finial we would be enough description for me, but that's, but that's just me. We can't do it because you have to notice this, this came up a couple times during the last half a dozen meetings or so. Yeah, it has to everything for freedom of information mark it has to be all the information has to be disclosed what is it peter 24 hours before the meeting i have a hard time getting to the mute quick yes <laughs> i mean i think a very minor addition is probably okay as long as it's not significant but here you're talking about the whole thing no yeah i get you eric it's this isn't just a clarification of a detail. I got you. As a matter of opinion, I'm not particularly crazy about what you have up. Um, however, it's there. So. Yeah, I'm wondering why like all the print or the lettering is different from sign to sign in terms of size and width of the letters. I'm not crazy about that myself, but it is what it is. There's Century 21 logos. There's um, different fonts for the different uh, branding. Okay. Well, um, at the very least, we need... I think that um, I think that we need to continue it to add the what it's made of and add the post to the application. Anybody else have any comments on that? I agree. Yep. All right. So then, Lori, we're going to move to continue this application. Okay. All right. And I'll resubmit, adding the posts and the and the material. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, and the dimension. You, I also would encourage you to revisit the sign design if possible. You might find it to be approved easier. I'm sorry. Could you say that again? I'm sorry. I would consider revisiting the sign design that you may find it to be approved easier. Okay. Would you like to offer any guidance in terms of what direction you think would be better? I just think it's a busy, large, um, somewhat intrusive sign compared to a lot of other things that have been put up recently. And I think that it was a stretch with what we voted on for the original one. I think that this could be done a bit better. If I went back to the original one, I wouldn't have a problem, correct? Correct, it's already been approved.
All right, so I'm going to continue this application. And when I pulled up the her Lori's old application, I lost my, well, there it is, my screen for what's next. Um, HDC 20-44, 291, 293 High Street, J. Delagrosso. I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go okay. ahead. I, I, um, I own the 291 and 293. And what I'm looking to do is just have a uh, clean uniform appearance in front of both houses. And I'm looking to just do a uh, rock wall in front of both that is similar as the uh, other houses on the street. In the pre-application, I put in photographs of other houses on the street and their stone walls. And that's what I'm going to copy. That's an example of a few houses down from me. That is a picture of 291. That's the, uh, the main house, the smaller house is in the back and both houses are separated by the uh, stairs. That says, that's in front of 293. The right side is an existing stone wall. Um, it would go to where that one is and continue over. And if you're looking, that's the picture to the right. The picture to the left is just standing on the stairs and looking down. So it's cleaning all that up and giving it a clean uniform appearance. And that's just a front view of that, uh, that same hill. The yellow line is in front of the main house, taking the section there and giving it the same look as the, uh, the other side. And that's just a depiction of the uh, where it would sit to continue from the wall that's uh, that's there now. That's one, another couple houses down, the same look. I just put another one in there to show. And they're all, both, both those pictures and examples are on High Street and they're both this, the same, uh, same type of wall. So you're just doing a dry stack stone wall? Yes, sir. You won't be back filling in behind it? No. Does anyone have any other questions for the applicant? It looks like a big improvement to me. It will be. It's many years coming. Thank you for saying. All right, if no one has any other comments, Thank you, Jay. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-44 is closed. Thank you. Thank you. HDC 20-45, uh, 5 Water Street, SIP Real Estate LLC. Uh, it's Cody again. I think I'll step in for this one. Okay. Um, like last time, same kind of thing. We didn't have the um, the dimensions of the sign, which we have them now. So, thirty by sixty. Um, it's vinyl. It's painted yellow to or orange. I'm sorry to match the, the colors of the they have up. So, Like last time, it was just us. We just didn't have the dimensions exactly. So, I I don't have any questions. Does anybody else? No. No. All right. Uh, thank you, Cody. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-45 is closed. 
uh, HDC 20-46, 89 High Street, Cynthia Warren and Craig Warren. I think, hello, do they have a phone number? Yes. Hello? Hi, You. we can hear you. Yeah, my name is Cynthia Warren. Okay, you can present your application. Okay, but I have a question first. Um, sure. The fact that I'm, the fact that I was on mute and you asked, does anyone in the audience have any comments or questions? I didn't, but what if I did? I mean, how would you know that? I couldn't speak. You couldn't hear me. Can you, well, that's a good question. Peter, can she raise her hand? No, I'm not. I'm only on telephone. She's I am only not on, on telephone. On the yeah. Oh. She's the only so one that's a, right. Gotcha. Well, we'll have so to. Uh, um, uh, we've sorry. gotten. We we, um, we are continually um, getting better at doing Zoom, and there is a way to unmute yourself on the telephone. I believe it is hashtag six or pound sign six to mute and unmute. I know, but but I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So we'll figure it out. And, and, <laughs> It's, this is something I just picked up in the last couple of days. So, so we okay. apologize. We're working on uh, getting our skills better at that. Okay. Well, um, maybe maybe so, Peter could add that to uh, his little spiel in the beginning. Okay, yeah, I think it's very important. Yeah, we could do that probably with the telephone, at least for people calling in. So Peter, if someone is just is on screen and they're muted, and Sarah asked the question, if someone wants to comment, would you see them, would they then what, raise their hand? Yeah. Or can they a, unmute themselves? They can unmute themselves because they make everybody a participant. Okay. So once I make everybody a participant, they have the ability to mute and unmute themselves. Okay. So the problem is if it's a, if it's a phone call calling in, they can't do it. Yeah. So if, if you're muted, you can hit the space bar and you'll unmute temporarily and speak. It's like a microphone toggle, but you can. Oh. Okay, so just the space bar alone. This, I think, me. hello? You may. Forgot to hold it down. If you hold down the space bar, it allows you to speak um, and you're unmuted. Like I said, it's like a microphone toggle. In addition though, if you are on a screen and you at the bottom, there's a, a an icon that says participants. If you click on that, there is a command that says, raise your hand. So you're not really raising your hand, but it, I think, sends a message to the moderator. Am I on mute now? No. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for bringing that up. That's a good point. Yeah, because I was, uh, I was in the meeting on, um, I was no, in the Mark, meeting on. Your hand up. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hello. I was just thinking Mark was doing an example to see if I could see his hand being raised and I could. Yeah. Go ahead. We can hear you. Oh, I just wanted to say the reason I brought that up is because I was in the meeting on June 16th and I, it was regarding 81 High Street petition for offense. I am their neighbor and I did not get any opportunity to make any objections. And then the case was, and the case was approved. And I want to know, do you have any policy where you can withdraw approval of a case that you've already approved? Well, if I recollect from that meeting, we did learn that you were on the call and reopened the public hearing to hear your comments. Yeah, but the thing was, it was all very confusing. And so I, I didn't even know. I didn't know I could do that, you know? I only know that now that I could have done that. Right, but you and did have the opportunity to make your objection it, but it, known yeah, in that I meeting. I didn't know, excuse me, I just said I didn't know that that was available to me at that time. So, but you know. I guess I don't but, understand what, the concern because. What it boils down to, what it boils down to is that I didn't know I had that opportunity at that time. And so I did not get to make any objections even though I was on the line, I didn't quite understand the procedure so that now the case has been approved. And all I'm asking you is, and this is a general question, 
once you approve something, can you withdraw your approval, yes or no? Not that I'm aware of. And I do believe you were given an adequate opportunity to give your opinion. I actually- Okay, well, I, I don't agree with that. And I will take that up at, a, at another meeting. I, we can go on in my case now. Well, ma'am, just so you know, you, you did object to it. And I actually said to them to they should talk to you as the neighbor and continue. And they chose not to. And I actually voted against it because of your objection. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And um, I've done a lot of thinking about that. And I am going to, I wanted to make a public communication tonight about, about that, my perceptions of it. But unfortunately, um, I cannot do it tonight as I had requested this early this morning with the secretary. So I'm going to try to get on the meeting for June 21st to make a, um, make a statement on the uh, public communications part of the meeting about that uh, situation. Okay. Okay, so we can go to my case now. Yes, you may present your application. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm asking for permission to take down the fence. Part of the reason I'm asking for permission to take down the fence is because the neighbor has pressured me very hard to take down the fence. Um, and since then, I have talked to different people about my rights. And, um, you know, so all, what I... On the fence, uh, am, is it mandatory then for me to take down the fence? No. Okay. And the other question is, if you grant me permission to take down the fence, is there kind of a uh, uh, is there a period of time after which the permission is rescinded? Five years. Five years. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, and then, um, and the other thing is, um, is there anything you need to ask me about the fence otherwise in order to, to uh, vote on it? Pierre, is this the entire application? Or are there any attachments that go with it? I sent the pictures in to Linda Galetta. Okay. Or, or, or my cousin. I think they're further. I think they're further. Hard time unmuting. <laughs> I'd unmute again. It takes, um, it's tough with the share screen. I got to hit a couple things to get up to unmute. All right, so here's the pictures of the fence. Okay, the only thing left that missed out is the property line, right? And how should I say? As far as I can tell, the application's complete and we wouldn't need anything else. Okay. Does anybody okay, else and, um, see anything or have any questions that they might want to ask her? No. I don't see Don anymore. Oh, I'm here. Okay, sorry, I lost you. Um. Hello, so, I have no. one. Okay. Sorry. So no, there's nothing additional that we would need. You have everything in this application. Okay. Thank you. I have one more question about fences. Maybe you can, you know this. Um, I'm wondering about any local laws that have to do with fences that are exactly on a property line, like a partition fence that's right on the property line. I think Is there any place I can find? That's a zoning no. question. And I, you know, off the top of my head, I don't think there's setbacks for fences. No, it's a civil matter. Okay. Thank you very much. So that means it can be on the property line, correct? Yeah. I, that's, that's not. It's a non. It's not regulated by us. us. Or by, right. That'd be a civil matter to take up. Any, okay. Yeah. So I should. I, I would ask zoning that question then. No, it's not. It's no, not it, it wouldn't even be a zoning issue. It would be a civil matter. It'd be with the court because it gets into surveyors and then surveyors contesting where lines are at. And so it'd be a judge would okay. have to actually sit down with it in the end and straighten it out. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And um, I, the last question is, do you vote and the same, you vote tonight on, on the cases or because I actually have to go now. So I would have to, uh, I'd have to call the secretary tomorrow to get the result. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, we do vote tonight. 
Okay. Thank you. But I, I have another obligation and need to leave the call now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you would very any, much. Bye -bye. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-46 is closed. Um, HDC 20-47-171 Candlewood Road, Wellspring Bio Fellowship. Hi, my name Hi. is Sheila. You can present your application. Okay, we're just looking to put in some condensers and line sets on the exterior of the building for air conditioning. Um, I don't see the pictures yet. Okay, so that's what you can see on one side of the building. The fence would cover the condenser itself. You'd still see the line set that comes down next to the, that middle window. Um, but as you can see, there's an air conditioner in the first window there, so th that would be coming out. So the air conditioners themselves are eyesore, so um, it's actually probably be more aesthetically pleasing just to see the one line set come down and then the condenser would be down on the ground there. So that's the one side. Okay, so that's the same side of the building, just showing where the condenser, the line set would come down and then the condenser would be right there. Mm -hmm. And this is the other side of the building, which is more of a street view. And so the air conditioner would come out and one line set would come down next to that first window and then the condenser would be there. Oh, no. mm -hmm. So that's the same. Drawing with the condenser. And then this picture just shows that they use the same color line set as the building. This particular one has multiple lines. We would not have that. We just have one line coming down straight to the condenser in the back. But um, this one just happens to have extra sets that we wouldn't have. Peter, in the beginning of the application were the um, specs, right? Yes, everything. Sizes. Okay. Does anyone have any comments or questions for the applicant? No? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-47 is closed. Thank you. HDC 20-48, 12 Water Street. You Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Todd Brady. I'm gonna recuse myself. Um, this, is, uh, this is an application for uh, Factory Square at 12 Water Street, and it involves um, some exterior renovation. So, if Peter, if you just slowly just scroll through the, the photographs, uh, this building was originally a two story, um, you know, stop right there. It was a two story uh, mill building. And when it was renovated in about late 70s, um, they added a floor on top and they put this mansard roof on that. Um, and, uh, and the decks, which are steel, channel steel, cantilevered out uh, around on the, on the uh, well, what is actually the fourth floor, though I don't wanna get into explaining why our four floors are not, not three, but um, believe me, it's true. We, um, we've been looking at this mansard roof for uh, quite a few years and um, I've never been crazy about it. Uh, we have, have uh, done some studies on actually removing the entire mansard, um, but the, uh, the cost was in excess of a half million dollars. Uh, a lot of it's got to do with the, um, the actual staging and performance of the work in what is a, a fully occupied uh, building and property. So um, what we've, we're proposing here are a series of, of bits of work. And if you scroll down at one sort of, uh, well, these are just showing the different sides. That's from the courtyard side. That's from the courtyard. Um, 
and that's from the courtyard side or the uh, south side. This is from the street, and um, and stop if you stop right there. So the first thing I just want to discuss specifically is that there is an existing crown and fascia that you see right there above the window. That's existing from the original building. Um, the fascia board is attached to uh, the original wooden um, uh, beams which run uh, across the building. So what we're proposing here is uh, we're going to remove the uh, entirety of the crown and the fascia and replace them uh, with exactly the same material. So if you go to the next uh, slide, um, that is a profile of the actual crown molding um, that is on the building right now and its dimensions. We had this specially milled um, by the Bosley Company in Maryland a couple of years ago. And so we're going to remove all the crown. We're going to remove the fascia, replace the fascia board, and put the crown back in place. So that was, I mean, I guess, I mean, we're really, it's like for like, but I included it in the application anyway, uh, just, just to be, uh, for the sake of clarity. The, the next thing we want to do is uh, these, um, these decks have been aesthetically uh, a maintenance uh, problem because they, they, although they've been painted repeatedly and it's quite um, expensive to do it, the, the paint just, just doesn't hold up aesthetically. So what we are proposing to do now um, on these decks, which are only on the top floor is, um, and there's some close-ups in the next slide of the existing rails on these decks. We wanna wrap the uh, bottom of the deck uh, with pressure treated lumber in two pieces. You can, if you look at that deck there, you can see that there's the channel steel, which is the, um, at the bottom there. And then there is a, a layer of two and a half inch layer of concrete on top of a, a pan filled um, corrugated metal deck. What we wanna do is um, we wanna, and there are details here, we wanna wrap the, the concrete uh, with a one by four. And then we wanna put another, uh, well, you can sort of see it here. It's actually detail number, I think it's detail number four shows it most clearly. If you look, you go to number four, right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the, uh, put a piece of one by four pressure treat attached to the, uh, the concrete and then a one by 10 pressure treat with a gap in between. Uh, the gap is because of the irregularities, you can see that the concrete deck is somewhat proud of the steel and um, and we think this aesthetically will look best. This is gonna be just pressure treated lumber. It's just gonna be left to weather. We're not gonna paint it. Um, and then on the bottom, if you see on the bottom, that's the bottom of the channel steel. We're gonna attach a, a two by four pressure treat and we're gonna install a, um, a series of uh, batten soffits along the bottom. So if you go to the, scroll down Peter, right there. So what you're gonna see is, and there's a detail of this, these are, uh, I think they're one by 10 boards with a gap in between. We're gonna install screening in the gap, um, which will be painted black. You won't really see it uh, so that, and that's to keep all the critters out of the, um, don't, yeah, I'd, I'd go back up, critters out from getting underneath in between the, uh, the, the slats. But the idea is to basically dress up the steel on the, uh, on the existing uh, channel and, and make it aesthetically look I think far more attractive than the current configuration. The other thing that we next intend to do is we want to install a, uh, what's called a hog rail. Um, um, right, this you see, this is a picture of it here and down below is a better representation um, in place of the, the um, ex over the existing baluster. We're gonna use the existing framework um, to, to put the rail up. You know, the existing rail, I mean, as I said, the, the top floor of this building is neither fish nor fowl. I mean, it's not truly historic in any respect. It, um, well, I always kind of think it looks a little like a nursing home, but, um, and that's unfortunate, but we're trying to, to do what we can um, to make it aesthetically uh, a more attractive thing. These kinds of um, wire mesh rails have actually, are becoming um, more popular and prominent of late. And they haven't, we looked at the, uh, wire rails, but this actually is a sturdier rail and doesn't require the amount of maintenance. Um, it's a 3 16th inch um, individual piece. They're galvanized metal. And so they they'll just be left um, 
uh, untouched. And then what happens if you go scroll up, Peter, to detail number, we're going to put a wood cap similar to that, but not quite the same. If you go up, 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 right there, we're going to we're going to put an ePay wood cap. We're going to dado it out and install it around the whole top of the existing um, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter um, uh, top pipe pipe rail tubing. And then what's going to happen is, as you can see, there's also an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter metal angle, and that will be installed, and that will pin the um, the new railing into the existing structure um, at the top. And the, one of the detail below shows it on the bottom, I believe. If you scroll down one. That's the corner where there's an angle on the corner of the existing um, metal stock mule. And then if you go down to the next one, it shows what happens at the bottom, along the bottom of the, if you go to section three, that's the bottom. So it, it'll be pretty much a uniform appearance. Um, and then the other thing we want to do is we intend to remove all of the existing uh, asphalt shingles that are on the mansard and replace them uh, with a 36 inch uh, metal roof panels uh, in color black um, all the way around the three sides of the building. Interestingly, the west side of the building has no mansard, it has nothing. It's just the bare concrete block which forms the structure for the, uh, what's the fourth floor. Um, it was never covered in the past. Um, but this is, uh, you know, these, these panels should go up, it shouldn't be overly difficult to install them. So I think it's going to, you know, it's, if I had my druthers, I'd still remove the mansard, but it's, it's just not justifiable from an expense standpoint. But we think that this work can be done and can significantly enhance the overall appearance of the building. And there is a drawing um, right before the number one right there, which just gives an idea of what the final result will be. I think it looks a lot better. It should look a lot better. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Uh, Somehow I lost Mark now. Oh, I'm here. Mark. I'm here. Curiosity. No. What are you going to do? Um, with yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mark. Todd, I do remember a nursing home in my hometown that had the exact yes. same. And it yeah, reminds or, me of nursing homes and or McDonald's. Yeah, I was going to say it's one or the other. Well, it was the 70s, Mark. <laughs> Was the Historic was, District Commission in existence when this was late 70s, the HDC around then? No. Well, that's reassuring. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions before we close the public hearing? Or this yeah, hearing? Uh, what are you going to do in the window cavities on the mansard? Um, well, they're currently plywood, so we'll repair them. Um, but we've, we've looked at two things. At the moment, we're just planning to repair them. If, if we, a decision, the only decision that, that might change if we come back for is uh, we also talked about possibly putting metal in there too, Eric, you know, just filling the, the void. It runs from about four inches down to about 12 inches, you know, in the, in the inside of a well there, um, which probably would be longer lasting. You know, one of the big issues on a building like this is we have a lot of squirrels um, and a lot of birds. And um, in fact, we've had raccoons up on the top floor there in the mansard. So we're trying to, in addition, you know, rebuilding the, the crown and the fascia and everything, we're trying to seal the thing up a bit more than it currently is. At the moment, there's some pretty good sized holes which allow pretty much anyone to get through. So, so we have to tenants who will sometimes say that they can hear the squirrels running along the, their ceiling on the fourth floor. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone like to speak against this application? 
HDC 20-48 is closed. HDC 20-49, 340 Packer Road. Hey, good evening, uh, Mike Wheeler. How are you guys? Great. You guys hear me all right? Sure. All right, so just to kind of catch everybody up to speed, uh, about 18 months ago at this point, um, I applied and had accepted a 24 by 24 garage. So you guys had approved every aspect of it. Um, since then, I chose to extend it back further and you guys approved the foundation extension. At the time, uh, you wanted a little bit more detail, I think probably had a lot to do with the fact that it had just been so long. So I thought for the sake of uh, everybody involved, I would just kind of reapply for that full garage uh, at the 24 by 40. And that's where we're at uh, today with this. So this is a garage that you can only see from two sides from the road. Uh, so straight on, looking up the driveway, you can see this view that we're looking at on the screen right now. And on the, if you're looking at the garage on the right side, you can see, all you will be able to see is that one window uh, plus the siding. So if we go back to that first screen, I can kind of try to walk through the, the details. Um, I think as you guys have learned over the last few years, I'm not a great drawer, so... Uh, excuse my my unstraight lines, but uh, hopefully I have all the detail you need. So we have nine by seven garage doors. They're going to be installed by Ace um, later on in the presentation. You'll see the garage door. Um, I lay out the types of trim uh, as well as the siding, but it's a bat, uh, board and batten siding on the bottom part of the garage and the hardy board. Um, but I believe it's a five inch or five and a quarter inch reveal on the top part. Um, that window that you see is an Anderson 400 34 by 53 window. It will be centered at 12 feet off the edge of the foundation. Um, and the top of the window is 200, inch, is 200 inches off the ground level. Um, do you have any questions before I move on to the trim? I do not. Anybody else? An Anderson 400 is a simulated divided light window. Is that correct? It's it's the all wood window uh, and it's the six six over one. So the grills are, uh, you know, they're like the snapping grills on the inside. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure if that answers your question, but. So, so there's no, there's no muttons on the outside of, of the glass. No. But they, I, I'll tell you right now, they match all the other windows you guys approved for the house, which is, okay. they're, just, they're literally just left over from, from uh, the house because we ordered too many. So, so moving on to the next page, or if you kind of want to, um, again, there's, there's this, that, that side wall, um, if you just scroll up just a little bit because I don't have my stuff in front of me. Uh, so there's one window. Um, it is centered 12 foot off the front wall, uh, 80 inches off the ground level. And again, the board and batten siding on the side, which I did not indicate here, but it's just the board and batten on the bottom level of the first floor level of the garage. You wouldn't mind sliding up to the next page. All right, so uh, the bottom walls of the garage are one by 10 pine shiplap with a, a two inch uh, batten, which is essentially a, a one and a half inches, uh, nine inches in between. Um, bottom of the garage and top are separated by one, uh, one by eight pine board. Um, top of the garage is hardy board siding, five and a quarter inch reveal. So the trim corner, uh, the corner boards are all pine. Um, they are five quarter by four inch. Uh, the garage door trim is one by four and the windows are five and a quarter by four. Those are just the additional dimensions of the trim. And that's just a drawing kind of indicating what I was talking about in terms of the trim. 
fascia fascia comes off the wall seven and a quarter inches it's just like a little built out situation and that's the window trim that's what it looks like there's a half inch top shelf uh, five and a quarter again by the four inch box pine wood material garage trim garage trim will match it that is the anderson window That is the garage door by Ace. There'll be two of them. What's the door made of? Uh, I be, uh, what's it say on there? Steel, maybe? I, I, I don't know. It's the Haas 663 garage door, long recess panel, R15 track. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I could, I mean, I could look it up obviously, but um, you know, I know how you guys are about trying to add things in here in terms of a public uh, view. So I believe it's just the steel construction. Yeah, it's an instant, all the 600 series are insulated steel. So this picture right here is simply just to indicate nothing other than the style of board and batten. Uh, so pay no mind to anything else. I just wanted to give you a better indication of what it would look like other than my terrible drawing. Again, that's just re-explaining uh, what I kind of already explained already. Well, the drawings aren't particularly attractive, but you do have the detail. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've learned my strong suit. <laughs> that's, not, that's not one of them. But I think this project was supposed to be completed about 18 months ago, wasn't it? The, the whole, whole house. Well, the whole house was supposed to be completed about two years ago. But, I know. Uh, I know. Life, life gets in the way and things change. So just uh, you guys just be lucky. It's not near downtown. That's all. Um, you know, just because you wouldn't have to look at it for that long. But um, this is the James Hardy. Uh, it's just the, the same stuff. It matches what's already on the house. It's actually left over from the house. So that'll be on the top part of the garage that is the uh, shingle we'll be using also is the same as the house shingle these are just uh, examples of the materials nothing new to explain and um, obviously you can well not obviously but you cannot see the left side of the garage um, from the road or any any sight lines. So this is just a picture of those two garage doors, uh, and what it's just the, what the stock photo they had on their um, on their website. Again, uh, just a, a general representation of the centered windows, the two garage doors, uh, and the window on the side of the house. There there appears to be a door there in the back right. That is not the case in my. In my plan, all you will see is a window. And that's just uh, Packer Road. And these are just pictures you guys, well, many of you have already seen in terms of where the garage is on the property. Uh, you're looking at the side right now. That house that you can see on the side, um, if you were standing in front of that house, that would be the side of the garage that you would be able to see from the street. But that again, that's this is just uh, this is just what you guys had already approved for the foundation. I don't think there's anything else that I need to explain in terms of the thing. If you guys have more questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But I, I know it's late. I don't want to take up a lot of your your time if if you don't need me to. Does anyone have any additional questions or comments for the applicant? No. Okay. All right. Wow. <laughs> this is the first oh, time. <laughs> this is the first time I've been so many times now that I, I might have a clue. Either that or it's just really late. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-49 is closed. 
HDC 20-564, Rachel Place, John Gordon, and Rose Corbett. Are they here? I see Rose. Uh, yes, I'm Rose Corbett Gordon, uh, here to make the request. Do you need to have my husband with me? I no, think? no, you can make the application. Go ahead. All right. Um, it has become necessary for us to have a generator. And I've um, uh, submitted uh, the plot map showing you where it will be. Here are the specifications. I, I did submit a picture of it too. Not that it's, yeah, it should be down farther. Uh, it's going to look like that. If you know how I can get a more beautiful one, I would really welcome your input. Here's my house. Do you see the yellow box on the right? That's the um, location of, which I understand is where this generator must be, uh, taking into account the, the position of our circuit uh, box, the propane tank, and the setbacks required by the town of Broughton. That's a view looking out toward the road, out toward Fort Rachel Place. That's right. So any questions or any input, which I would welcome? Peter, can you scroll back up to the dimension? Does it have the dimensions in it? There we go. Yeah, there it is right there. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any additional questions or comments for the applicant? Uh, I'm just curious, is, what's the fuel for the generator? I'm sorry, what's that again? Propane? What's the fuel? Like, what power is the generator? Uh, Propane. 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 Okay, all right. But, or, so is there a line that's going to go from your propane tanks? Yes. There'll be, uh, yes, it, there'll be a connection to uh, the circuit. Uh, box and there'll be a, a, a trench uh, with a line to the propane tank. It'll be all underground. Okay. Underground, yes. These will be underground. Okay. Any other questions? No? All right. Oh, so a decision will be made tonight and I can call tomorrow and find out what that is. Or stay on till you make the decision? Is that the way it works? Yes, and ultimately a letter will go out. Okay. I, I'm just sorry you couldn't tell me how I could make it more beautiful. But... Well, you. suffice suffice to say that even though it doesn't, we don't take it into account, you can always plant some bushes around it to screen it if you want to. And we have no jurisdiction over that anyway. Yeah, the uh, electric electrician tells me he doesn't want anything too close to it because he needs to be able to get get near it to serve it. But at any rate, that's not your. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that close. But you, if you want to just sort of screen it from the road, you can do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-50 is closed. We will close public hearings and open our deliberations. And during our deliberations, only the commission members and staff may speak. So the first is the 56 West Main Street. Um, I don't know which number this this was the um, mystic pizza one i don't have an hdc number on my the thing i'm looking at so i apologize it's hdc 20-15 thank you so hdc 20-15 56 west main street this was the addition of the walk-in cooler and the screen um any comments or motions 
Move to approve. Uh, what? What? Eric moved to approve. I don't know if someone seconded. Um, so that's the one that was continued? That's, no, this was the, um, this, this is the Mystic Pizza screen one. The green thing. Oh, oh, because you already continued? The, oh, no, she's talking about the movement mortgage one. Oh, yeah, that one was already continued, so I didn't call that one. Oh, because I don't know who um, made motions. That's so Eric made the motion. I don't know if there was a second. Well, uh, unless, Linda, are you talking about the motion to continue? No, no. Correct, Linda's the motion to continue. Movement. I didn't make a motion to continue because it was continued. You want me to make a motion to continue for the first one? Whatever you feel, it you don't need to, I guess. Um, it's just still continued, I think, is what Lynn, uh, Sarah is saying. I got right. you. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I'm with you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Sarah, okay. do you want to move to continue it? Sure. Cool. Uh, I don't know, but Linda, what's, let's go back. Let's start over. Okay. What's the HDC number of the bag realty for movement mortgage? 20-15. Okay, so I move to continue HDC 20-15. I'll second. All right, all in favor and I'll do roll call. Moriarty, aye. Jenna, uh, Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Did I hear you? I'm sorry. Aye. Okay. Uh, and Summers? Aye. The um, applications continue. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry there about the confusion. What was the um, HDC number for um, 56 West Main Mystic Pizza? 2025. Can you 20. see the screen, Sarah? I got it up. Oh, right I'm now. sorry. I was looking at my other screen. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. That makes it much easier. <laughs> HDC 20-25, 56 West Main Street, um, walking cooler and surround. Any motions or comments? A move to approve. That was Mark? Sure. I'll second. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Any comments? My only comment is I think the screen will look much nicer. Um, I'll do a roll call. All in favor? Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Summers? Aye. The application is approved. Uh, HDC. 20-33, 5 Water Street, Sip Real Estate. This was the um, mix sign on the back where we were missing the dimensions previously. Any comments or motions? I move to uh, approve. I I'll second. Start. That was me, Linda. Did um, you? I'm sorry. Um, I'm lost because what we're looking at is last is the minutes from last time. Oh, so uh, so I I'm sorry, I you lost me. You're right, it is. So I'll go back to what I was looking at. Okay. Um, but since we were on SIFT, I'm going to stay with that one. It's HDC sure. 20-45, um, and that was the mixed signage. So. Peter, just go all the way up if you could to the beginning. We, um, we had a first and a second, so all in favor, Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Uh, I'm just going to abstain. Oh, all right. Summers? Aye. All right, so now we're on. Um, who And who were first and second? I was second. OK. I am moved to approve. Okay. Yeah. So now we're on HDC 20-35, 9 Elm Street, John and Julie Leonard. Uh, this was the condenser. Um, so, we're... Uh, so I, I'm really sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm really lost. So I'm okay. still stuck on 17 West Main Street. Did you, you didn't we, get there yet? I didn't. So we okay. did. Um, All right. I don't know where I am. Can no, you see? Fine. Can you, you see you the screen there, me. Linda? No, no, no. I can see the screen. I'm lost in my software, but that's fine. I'm, I'm good. 
Do you want us to get, why don't you just tell us when you're ready? And I don't want to, there's a lot on the agenda. So why don't we let you catch up to where you need to be? So, um, okay, hold on. Take your time. So we are on 9 Elm Street? Yes. OK, good. OK, and you've got the. Aye. The application is approved. Um, the next one is on the list is HGC 20-45, but we've already voted on that one. Do you need a minute to catch up on that one, Linda? This was 5 Water Street. Yes. Right. And this was the next sign. Okay, and that was Brady, Moriarty, um, Goodman abstained, right? Correct. Okay, perfect, I'm there. Okay, the next one is HDC 20-46, 89 High Street, Cynthia Warren and Craig Warren. This was the removal of the fence. Any comments or motions? Move to approve. Second. Second. Oh, you, you can second that one. All right. I'll second. All right, I, I do have a comment. I was pleased they were moving it. That was one of my concerns about the previous fencing application that they were gonna have two fences pressed up against each other. Um, Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Summers? Aye. The application to remove the fence is approved. HDC 20-47, 171 Candlewood Road, Spring Bible Fellowship, sorry. Um, this was the application to install the condensers. Moved or approved. Second. All right, no comments, all in favor. Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Summers? Aye. The application is approved. HGC 20-48, 12 Water Street, Factory Square, LLC. Uh, applicant was Todd Brady. These were the exterior renovations to the roof of Factory Square. Um, any comments or motions? I move to approve. I'll second. I'll second. Any comments? All in favor? Moriarty, aye. Brady? Um. Recuse, abstain. abstain. Uh, Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Summers? Aye. The application is approved. HGC 20-49, 340 Packer Road, Harpool and Realty. This was the application to extend the um, garage. Any comments or motions? I move to approve. I'll second. Any comments? All in favor? Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Summers? Aye. The application is approved. Can you scroll up a little, Peter? I, I lost where I, oh, there it is, sorry. Uh, thank you. HDC 20-50, Six Fort Rachel Place, John Gordon Rose Court Record, and this was the application to install the generator. Uh, any comments or motions? I'll move to approve. Second. All right, any comments? All in favor? Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Summers? Aye. The application is approved. All right, so do we have any pre-application hearings tonight? Yeah, we should have a few out there. We're going to have them pop in.
Hi, this is Kathy Dart. Can you hear me? Hi, Kathy, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, my husband, Trad, and I, we called in because we'd like to do a pre-application hearing for an addition uh, to the house. So I don't use Zoom, I've never used it, and I'm a little bit awkward at this. Um, Peter, I did send you in case I wasn't able to pull it up or take control, I don't know how this works. I can, um, I can have you share documents if you want, I can make you a co-host right now and you can share right from your screen. Okay. Give me one second, I'm just gonna okay. want you to make you a co-host, there we go. And now you should be able to see a function on there, share. I, I got it, yeah. And you should be able to pop that on there and you'd be putting up on the screen for us. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, yes, the map. Perfect, yeah, okay. So I put together a PDF packet. Uh, it includes exterior photos of the house and um, our architect's drawings, but I started here with where the property is. It's at 34 New London Road in Mystic. It's right near the corner of Allen Street, and we are on um, route New London Road, uh, Route 1. So we're the second house in on the northeast side. Uh, this is a street view. Um, it's covered by hedge and from the front, from the direct front. I think I got this off a of bang. This top photo, if you look into the left, that'd be going towards Groton, and the bottom photo would be going towards Allen Street. So the, the on the top photo, the house is on the right side. So most of it's blocked from the road. And on the bottom photo, the house and garage you see is on the left side. So from um, the road, this is looking at the house. It's, this is the south side of the house, and that's what you see from the main road from the driveway. And that's a direct shot of the front of the house. Let me know if I'm going too fast. This is the front uh, and west side of the house. This is the west side of the house. This is the south side of the house. Or the, the north side of the house. I'm, I'm sorry, yes, correct, the north side of the house. Here's a straight on of the north side of the house. And this is on the east side of the house. And that's the garage there. Here's a direct east side, which is the garage. And this is also the east, but the front, so the southeast. And then we go back to the beginning. So here is um, a map of here is Allen Street on the right side and New London Road uh, on the bottom here. If I scroll up, here's a proposed addition to the house, so it will be in the back of the house. So it's pretty much goes straight back on the west side of the house is a bump out that's bumped out four feet um, and the length is 14 feet. And we just bumped it out so it's just not a clear straight line back just to give it some definition. So this is um, just the existing basement. This is the existing uh, layout of the house. This is the roof plan existing. of existing. This is the existing north elevation. The south elevation, which is the front of the house. 
the east elevation, the west elevation, And this is the uh, floor plan for the new design. Um, this is the roof plan. Let me scroll over. This is North Elevation. Scroll over. South Elevation. East Elevation, the new addition. The West Elevation, the new addition. And that's it. So I guess I'm just looking for, uh, we're both looking for guidance on uh, what we would need for the application in addition to what I just presented. I mean, I think this is this is pretty comprehensive, except I guess you guess it need some um, a certain amount of text to say, for example, what all the materials are on the new on the addition. And if if they're the same as or what you've got on the main part of the house, then you have to state state that. So in other words, what's the siding? What are the windows, window sizes, kinds of windows, you know, and some the specs on the windows, that kind of thing, and and basically just describe what it is your your um, your building, what what it's going to be made out of. I, mean, I think okay. it's it's reasonably detailed in terms of exactly what it is appearance wise. <laughs> so the siding will match the existing siding, so it'll be a a match, and the same with the windows. Um, they'll be the, the same as the existing windows in the house. So we'll match those as well. So for the, to list out the materials, does that need to be listed out on any type of a plan or will it be on the application? How do you require that? You can put it on the plan or you can add it add as, a, as a list of specifications, just, you know, just labeling them, saying what they are. Okay. And, but I noticed the windows on the back are, or have mountains in them, but the windows in the original do not. Is that the actual condition or what's proposed? Those are divided yeah. lights in the addition in the back. Yes, for the divided lights. Um, I can scroll up. Uh, there was a shot there. Is it here? I'm sorry. Um, what was the question? Well, in that the, the elevation we're just showing us the, the the windows on what was I think the addition showed they were divided lights, but the the oh see they're divided lights. That's that's the rear of the new addition there, right? That's the garage on the left. Yes. All right. Yeah. So see on the left, see all the, the windows on the left aren't divided lights. The windows on the right on the addition are. I mean, I'm just clarifying what, whether they're the same or whether they're different. Yeah. Um, well, we, uh, so I'd have to uh, specify on that. It's, it's sometimes <laughs> easiest just to have the arc. Give you the model of the windows that are going to be used 
Okay. Um, that's what most people do is they just take the page out of the Anderson catalog or whatever brand you're using. Um, but right. also in addition to siding in windows, shingles and trim. And those are all things an architect usually can supply. Okay, shingles, trim, model of windows and specs. Any, any doors, exterior doors that have been added. Uh, the rails, there's rails that run off the, what is that rear deck on the existing house? comes yes. across the roof. Yeah. So yeah. the railing, what the rail is made of, material, that kind of thing. Okay. But I think as Mark said, the, the architect, normally those would, the architect would just put all those on the drawing. Um, is there an architect who did these or were these done on a CAD system or? No, it was an architect out of, um, it was out of New Haven. Okay. So, who drew up the plans for us. So, so do you, you have architectural, do you have architectural drawings of elevations as opposed to more of a rendering? Is he giving you those? No, he hasn't. All right, well, that's typically where you would see it. I mean, it could appear on these render, render drawings, but typically it'd be more of an architectural elevation and they just specify, you know, sizes, dimensions, size of the addition, all that kind of stuff. Well, we have to know how big it is. Not because it necessarily matters approval wise, but because you have to build what you show you were gonna build. So we, we can't tell how, how, you know, how deep the addition is, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? Well, just when you go through it, it was a little hard for me from these renditions to figure out what was new and what's already there, there's somehow you could, you know, kind of clarify that as you go through it. Because when you come for the regular hearing, basically you have to do this deja vu all over again and just go through all this again. Okay. Um, it has it on, on the drawing. Um, I also have physical copies that we had gotten from the architect, which I can get copies. Is that something I should send in for the actual hearing or do I? Does he have that? I mean, for ease of operation, if he has them electronically, I think it's hard for, well, maybe not, but to scan in large maps for all of us to see where if you can, send them in if you can email them to linda that would probably be easier yeah, yeah. pdf drawings are really the best they upload okay. into the system very easily and that's what he did send me he, it was before covid when he sent the hard copies because we were physically planning to go to the meetings but i do have them on um pdf yeah, so, so I would send them. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So you can put them together all as one big package as you have them here. It's just that you need to have all the dimensioning and, and the okay. call out the specs and everything in your package. And then uh, you should be good to go. I mean, I think you would just have to, to say to the architect that he's got to, he or she's got to provide enough detail so we know what it's made of, how big it is, how tall it is, what the size of the windows are, all, all the things. Well, basically all the things that whomever is going to build it would need to know. Right, we just had that conversation with the builder. We were just got to, uh, we're working on getting a second quote and he came back and said the same thing. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah absolutely right on that with, for him. Um, yeah. Okay, so this was good information. Um, anything else? One other thing, um, it looks like that upper deck was a balcony off the back and it's becoming a full deck. Is that right? Yeah, it's just, um, yes. It'll just be a railing across. Just just need materials for that too. Okay, yep. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Is there anyone else in the audience? for a pre-prelim? Yes, good evening. This is uh, Eric Kudlis from Eric's Design Build Associates, uh, Inc. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. 
Okay, uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Michael Hardesty, 14 Fort Rachel Place. And um, I uh, took Mr. Goodman's uh, recommendation and went back to look at the minutes of the previous meetings. Uh, in, in essence, what has uh, happened there that uh, uh, I had represented uh, Mr. Hardesty several times in the past before the commission and we did some projects on his home and those were satisfactorily uh, completed. And he recently had a garage uh, approved by the commission to be built on his property. And in essence, uh, the garage was built, uh, but it was not built according to what had been uh, approved by the commission. Even though the, the foundation was, uh, the footprint was the same, and for the most part, the materials was the same, um, what happened was that the building was built with uh, reading from the minutes, uh, maybe I'll just read a couple sentences from the minutes here. Uh, the builder explained in a previous meeting uh, before the commission that the approved transom windows had been changed to double hung. He tried to match the windows on as to what existed in the neighborhood, but using the double hung instead of the transom increased the mass and scale of the structure. And the commission felt it was different structure and it had created a change in perception of the mass and size. Uh, the builder went on to say, and here's where the problem started. The builder went on to say that the, uh, he had been invited in by the original builder. There were two builders involved with the project and that the framing was done by the original builder, but there was a disagreement and the original builder left and uh, Mr. Falco, who was the second builder, continued uh, on with the project, uh, but he didn't have uh, a good set of plans. And frankly, uh, it's just naive and never worked uh, in a historical district before. And so he changed the windows. And I think the other major issue was the building was built uh, one foot, 11 inches, basically two feet higher than was originally approved. So the issue for the commission is that the structure they approved was not built as approved. Uh, and the workmanship and the materials were not in question. Uh, the builder pointed out it'd be a major undertaking to correct the height and the windows at this point. Uh, but bottom line, it came, it was, uh, it was not built as, as it was approved. That's really what the bottom line is. So Mr. Hardesty uh, asked me to come in because I had worked before the commission previously and, and on his property previously to uh, work with the commission, get the commission's guidance and come up with a course of action and basically fix the problem. So, and do whatever the commission suggested and recommended in this regard. And uh, I, I should probably first say that the the changes were not malicious in their intent. Uh, it wasn't someone set out to sneak something by. It was just uh, it was a perfect storm of uh, disagreements between builders and not having accurate plans and just a naivety about uh, what needs to be done when working with uh, the commission. And uh, so basically I'm here at this meeting to get the guidance uh, from the commission as to some appropriate measures we can take. Um, as I see it, there's basically three options. Maybe there's more, but I think there's basically three options. We could force, uh, basically demolish the upper half of the building and rebuild it as approved. It could be approved as is, or it could be approved with the recommendations of the commission. And um, uh, when they first showed me what was there, I, off the top of my head, I, I made some suggestions to deal with the, the mass of the uh, building because the, the commission's uh, analysis of what was there was correct, in my opinion. Um, and uh, even though it matches the house, uh, it, it was bigger and the window change, uh, I think did make an impact on it. And um, if I could, this is going to be my first time attempting this. So I, I'd like to screen share if possible. And uh, please bear with me. I might mess this whole thing up. And if I 
If I do, uh, I'll, I'll come back. <laughs> so let's see if we can do this. So on, on what the, this is how the building is built currently, but it does not have the rake runs. This was one suggestion that I made uh, because something needed to be done to break up the mass of the face. And uh, if we look in plan books, one of the things they do is they classify capes, for example, as one and a half story uh, homes, uh, even though for all practical purposes, capes with dormers are two-story homes. But because the roof line is brought down to uh, the level of a, a single level home, uh, it's called uh, for classification purposes, uh, a uh, story and a half home. So what I suggested just off the cuff, I said, well, just get the height impact, uh, you, know, you know, broken up. We need to break up the face of that to reduce the, the mass. I mean, if we're in a dining room and we have a tall wall, we can add chair rail, we can add wainscoting, we can add crown molding. We can do something to break up the, the mass of the, the room. So I, I suggested that, uh, and then uh, they, Wayne, uh, the builder had, had them draw it in. And I suggested uh, putting in what we call rabbit runs or rake runs, and then putting our eyebrow across and carrying that all along the side and uh, breaking up that height that way. And I suppose uh, there's other things we could do. This is the uh, double hung window, similar to the garage and applicant. Eric, 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 yeah. Eric. We, don't, we aren't looking at any drawings. We're just looking okay. at an email. Oh, you, can, you can't see this drawing? No. no. Do you have two screens? No. Oh boy. I want to, what we're looking at is your email that it looks like you might have sent to the town. This is my email. Yeah. Yeah. Well, click, click on that. Will it open? And you cannot see this. No. Oh my God. Is, is it open? Yes. But it looks like Eric, you sent this to Peter. So perhaps Peter can open it. Um, I don't think he sent that to me. Yeah, I, I did. That email was actually to you. It's dated June 30th, Peter. Okay. My Are apologies. Double clicking where your mouse is right now. Yeah. Did you double click on that PDF there? Yes, I did. Let me get back okay. out of it. Hardest I thought I was missing something there. Uh, my apologies. I I double clicked on it, and you don't see that. No, we just see your email. No, oh, my brother. Well, right what now it looks like it's trying to open. Uh, that was would have been to Peter would have been June thirtieth at eight fifty four. PM. Looking through June 30th. Let's see. Is it from your Eric Cutlass address or is it from? It's from Eric AK at Comcast.net. E R I K A K at Comcast.net. Maybe, Eric, you could re forward it to him now. Could do that, yeah. Click on. Uh, I just have the emails from today. Oh, jeez, go to a Google. That's not going to work. If you forward, if you can you forward? Is this a live screen email? we're looking at? Yeah, I just hit, hit forward. forward up top. Yeah. Yeah. To. There we go. Thank you. Thanks for the help. Yeah, my apologies. I, I didn't think that would happen. No, you think We're all learning Zoom. 
Yeah, no kidding. I didn't realize I could have multiple co-hosts. I found that out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do pretty well with the Zoom, quite frankly. It's uh, it's such a versatile program. I'm a little intimidated by it. Still waiting for it to come through. So uh, while he's waiting, uh, you know, for that, one of the things I, I, I believe the commission in its authority has uh, more flexibility with this particular site than uh, we might have if the property was located on Main Street or a, a travel uh, area where, where uh, you know, people sightsee the traffic, you know, people are down Main Street, they're buying ice cream, drinking coffee and and uh, so there's a lot of, of visibility for what we're doing here. Um, but in this uh, email, I have uh, pictures of the neighborhood. And a couple of things that we can see is that this can only be viewed by one neighbor on each side. In back of this property, there's roughly a 50 or 60 foot ledge wall. And the homes that are on the back side of that are not in view and cannot see his home or this garage. Across the street, there's a ledge outcrop that was probably, a, a, it's, it's pretty tall and it was probably a, a, a visual for uh, overlooking the harbor, but there's nothing across the street. The road is 12 feet wide in front of Mr. Hardesty's home. And uh, he's basically at the dead end of, of uh, Fort Rachel place and uh, 100 feet down the road is the backside of the boat yard uh, that's there and and the view is of a boat wrapped in plastic all winter long so it's it's not a tourist spot and it does not get a lot of visitation from people uh, so it's not like it would be in a in an area where people would come through and be interested in you know, in admiring or uh, studying the, you know, the architecture of the neighborhood. Basically, the only people I go down, they want to get to their boat and spend more money on fixing them up uh, from what I have been able to see. And uh, I also did enclose uh, a letter of support from one of the immediate neighbors who has seen it. Oh, here we go. Just, just so, so we're clear, I, I don't think... We, we denied the application to have it built as it is, correct? That's, that's correct. You, so, you approved a previous version of it. It was not built per your approval. And uh, Right, but I think you said there were three options, which was either modify it, deny it, or approve it. I, I think we already denied it. So, or sorry, it was tear it down approve it or modify it. So we're With not carrying it down. We already denied it. So it's how do you modify it? So yes. In this thing, I don't know if you can open it, Peter. Yeah. Is this all you got open right now, right? Can you see that? We can oh, see the just... photos. Oh, nope. so see, I'm having the same problem now. <laughs> oh. I see thumbnails. Can you open those PDFs? And it's open on mine right now. I'm trying to figure out how to... So we have uh, the ledge outcrop you could see in the back and the homes on that opposite side of the red, uh, ledge uh, cannot see the structure. The, uh, across the street, we have what is primarily an unbuildable uh, lot. There you go. Uh, there we go. So this is basically two feet higher than it should have been. And these windows, uh, instead of being transom windows, they put in uh, windows that, in essence, match the neighborhood and the house. So this was not there. These rake runs and this eyebrow were, are not there now. So you have a big, flat face of a building. And so uh, I have to agree with the commission that that is a big, white mass of a face and so my first reaction was well something needs to be done 
to break up that mass. And as I mentioned previously, Cape style homes are classified as one and a half story homes, although with dormers there, Technically, I guess you could say they're two-story homes, but they're classified because the roof line comes down to the first floor level. So it, that suggestion I made because it would make it look more like a, a cape, which is common to that street in that area and uh, break up the mass of the face. And then I suppose these windows could be uh, taken out and be redone with uh, the original transom windows. Uh, and then for the most part, you'd have a, a structure that uh, does not have the same mass impact, although it is bigger. Um, it's easier on the eyes. But the, I think the commission and its authority has a lot of leeway here because of the neighborhood, its location. And uh, one of the neighbors wrote a letter, it's attached here, in support and doesn't bother them and they like it. Uh, so basically what I'd like to do is, is deal with the issue and, and take whatever recommendations the commission has and resubmit an application, uh, do whatever I need to do to satisfy the commission. Uh, I'd like to make some cosmetic changes rather than demolish the upper half of the building because if, frankly, if the building is just two feet shorter and you change out the windows, it's, it's still going to have a lot of mass impact. And uh, I, I'd rather do something a little more creative with it. Uh, I think we could do better. And, and uh, so I'm basically here to solve problems and to do whatever the commission says. Now that's the letter of, uh, from the neighbor next door. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Have we seen any pictures of the, where the, the elevations we saw? Was that where we are right now or what he's proposing to change it to? It, it, it is the actual elevation except for the rake runs and the eyebrows of the lowered roof line that is the exact building. The only thing I had suggested to them several weeks before I actively got involved, I suggested that they do something to break up the mass and uh, just off the top of my head, I said, look, make it, make it look more like a cape. There's capes on the street. Make it look more like a cape, uh, break up that face. And uh, that's across the street. That's a 12 foot road in front of his home. So in essence, nobody really sees the home except the two neighbors. And uh, there's virtually no traffic uh, there. I think that was a lookout over the harbor across the street. But uh, Eric, I, I used to live on that street. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of traffic for what it's worth. Well, when I did the projects there, I didn't witness a lot of traffic, but I guess people I going down. For a year. Yeah, okay. It's a public thoroughfare, so. Mm -hmm. Just the view from where, Eric, on that one? That's right from the front of the garage. OK. So did I hear you suggesting to put the transom windows back? I wasn't sure, because I didn't well, think that, uh, that was what was in the plans you just showed us. I, no, it, it isn't. This That's what's actually built there, right. uh, except for the, the rake runs and the eyebrows, the roof line mm -hmm. eyebrows. And uh, I was just putting out ideas. Those, those were ideas I had. Uh, if the commission said, well, we wanted the transom windows back, we could switch, switch out the windows. Um, I don't believe that two feet of height difference is is all that significant. Uh, but I do agree that the mass of the whole structure uh, is significant. And if it was two feet lower and it didn't have the, uh, the uh, uh, 
rake runs and it had the transom windows, it would still be a big flat wall in, in essence. So my my quick take on it was uh, let's let's lower the roof line and the visual impact and uh, whatever else uh, the commission would. Uh, I'm here to do what the commission wants in essence. Um, but these are just some ideas I had uh, re if they if the commission was unhappy with the double hung windows, we'd go back to the transoms. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm here looking for guidance. That's, that's what I would just basically say. And we'll do whatever the commission feels is appropriate and best in view of the neighborhood and the factors involved. And I just want to repeat, this wasn't, they didn't set out to do something malicious and behind the back. It was a perfect storm of two people involved, disagreements, no plans, naivete, and, uh, you know, you just can't have that in, in this, in, in the historic district and in these kind of projects. Um, I wasn't at the meeting that, um, at which the, the, the previous certificate of appropriateness was requested for the building is built, but just to refresh my memory here, I'm looking at this front elevation here on the left. Yes. And I just can't, is that a representation of what the building is, looks like now? Or are those what I might refer to as sort of shed dormers or whatever, are those, those are in the existing building? Yes, this is the existing building right there. It's 20, 24, 25 feet high, let's, let's say it's, and this is these rake runs are not there. I so asked, when you to say the rake runs, what exactly are you referring to? That's this roof line here. Can you see my cursor? Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that what are, coming what down to? is what I call a rake run. Some people call it a rabbit run. I don't know why, but I suggested that be added to make it to bring the roof line down and oh, break up the face of the structure because otherwise the structure is a two two story basically All right, and so flat. what you've done is you've projected the that gable end out beyond the face of the existing first floor basically yeah it would it would come out to the yeah that's right that's correct and there'd be some shingles you know on the bottom where the eyebrow crosses underneath the window and it just wraps around the building. Yeah. And you can, like that, yeah. And the colors and the materials, uh, there was no problem with those and they do match the existing house. Uh, they're twin, twin sisters, so to speak. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is it's not what was approved and I, I need to make it what is satisfactory to the commission and I'm going to have oversight of the project now myself and and uh, and any confusion there was on what caused this to happen in the first place. Uh, again, I you know I, I like Todd was not wasn't here at the original approval, but it would be very very useful in reviewing this to be able to compare to have images of what was approved, where we are right now. And what you recommend uh, and what you propose, those three different phases. I think that would help a lot because I, I'm, it, it's taking me all the way to this point to understand what you're trying to do, which is, I think, trying to create the illusion of a long dormer. Um, Correct. And training. But I, I'd like, to, uh, the, but the thing that led to all this is the discrepancy between what was approved and what was built and we don't have that right now at least not sitting in front of us that's what so we're relying upon exactly. memory yeah and, it's and there mark but it's piecemealed through the last four or five meetings so i i agree with you though i think it would be much more helpful but i mean eric mm -hmm. the 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 build the the garage is built yes a, and it was not my understanding that the original contractor, my understanding was the original contractor didn't do any work on that house at all. Um, that the, 
at least the original original contractor who came in with a designer that they neither of them had anything to do with the building once it began to be framed and it's in the because the other i remember the other framer saying well i didn't have any plans so i just sort of built this thing well i mean not to cast aspersions but i find that kind of hard to believe we know the plans were filed with the the, the building department and the permit was issued on the basis of those plans but it seems as though this changed the character or use of the garage with regard to the second floor. In other words, I think it probably made it a far more useful second floor than it was in the original design. So I don't know. I find it hard to believe there was no volition involved in, in how it came out. I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. I would agree because the original area was just supposed to be unconditioned space and now you have plumbing and air conditioning and you know a full second floor which may have been fine if they had just come with it in the beginning what i was told was that the original builder could not perform on the project and said he would work with the second builder. And then there was a disagreement and uh, they parted ways. At what point the structure was at that time, I, I don't know, but I know there's a problem and uh, that's what I want to address and fix. All right, well, I think Mark's suggestion was a good one. I think, and, and, and the problem of course is that I don't think we're in a position or of a mind to tell you what we think you should do because I'm not sure that we know what you should do. Um, but I think that if you come back for another preliminary, which I think is what you should do, you should say, here's the original, as Mark said, here's the original building as approved. Here's what was actually built. And here's what I'm proposing we do. And I think as Eric said, that sort of has maybe occurred but it, you, we have to look at it in context or you know so we can compare no that's a good idea i can do that so you know before coming back with uh, you know i understand the original what was built and and suggestions what i was hoping to do was was i mean i've listened uh, now to a number of things and and I remember when I previously worked with the commission, the commission on, on the projects uh, had a lot of good ideas, many of which we didn't incorporate uh, into the projects. And, and uh, so if there were ideas that you could suggest or, or, or wanted to suggest, if there were any, um, I'd like to hear, hear them and uh, see if we could make them work. I mean, so I just wanted to have an open door to that rather than just come in and say, this is what I think we should do. And, and uh, you know be arbitrary about it and think, uh, you know i think you went in the right direction i think your suggestion of swapping the windows out might be extremely beneficial as to reducing the mass and my only design comment would be i think that you your carrying of that roof line across the front doesn't really work with the house or is a little uncharacteristic though i've seen it on more modern capes so I would maybe just make the roof return about two feet and have it kind of come across as like a detail, but mm -hmm. not carry across the whole front. Okay, yeah, I could do that. Are there any other? Uh... Carrying it down the side to create those dormer looks is a, is a good idea to break up the side. Mm -hmm. And, and on, on the side of the building, you're, you're saying carry it across that way? Is that what I'm understanding you're saying or suggesting? Yeah, because I think that breaks up that long or tall, uh, what would it be, north and south side? Yes. But I think doing it on the east side or the front side, mm -hmm. I think is, is a little, I think it's a little overdone. Okay. But I would still return it a foot or two because it's a nice look. Yeah, usually I do three feet, something like that. Okay, uh, are there any other suggestions or ideas? And I'll put together that presentation for the next uh, next meeting. And I'll I'll try to get my screen share uh, in a, in a more. 
mean, because I think I think that from an aesthetic standpoint, you know, the way it was actually built, it begins to look on first impression almost like a a commercial structure with you know very high sides and a and a not very steeply pitched roof on top. I mean, if I mean, I, I said this image in my head of of what that begins to look like. And I think that's one of the objections. It's, it is the overall mass. I understand the rake runs thing. Aesthetically, I'm not crazy about what it makes the house or the garage look like just for pure aesthetics, but you know, we are where we are, I guess. So I don't know. Well, I thought lowering the roof line would break up the mass. That, yeah. that was what my goal really was. And that, and that is, uh, and you know, Cape style homes in that general area are, are common. Uh, so you'll see a lot of those runs. I just, I, I guess I, you know, when you start coming, when you start coming out with those, those runs and you're proud of the first floor, you know, it, not that you're getting close to it yet, but I begin to start thinking about garrison colonials, which aren't my favorite <laughs> kind of house either, if you know what yeah. I mean. So right. Gamber. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gamble. Look at the house that uh, the woman presented tonight, the generator for it, right next door to Mike's, 10 or, or no. It was six, I, I think it was six. Yeah. I mean, look at some of the details on that house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if I hear you correctly, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have the uh, print on the screen of what was originally approved, what was built, and then some of the ideas that uh, we've discussed. Is that a good course of action? Is that? Uh... Yeah. I, I think Something that's... else you might want to look at just, you know, is on Block Island, all of the capes are story and a half capes mm -hmm. with eyebrow uh, transom windows on the second floor. That's the classic uh, Block Island house. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think, what was originally presented was that kind of look. And what that is, is a story and a half rather than a full two story house. If, if you just look up a couple of the old Cape Cod farmhouses, you might get a better sense of where you're heading. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think oh. the first point of coming back for pre-app, Sarah, I think you said that, is the right course of action. In, in other words, you mean not quite ready for a uh, formal hearing? I don't think so. No, I'd, I'd like to have clearer guidance as to what I should do and where we should go uh, rather than have a formal hearing. And, and I, I, I agree that uh, the suggestions made to show the original approved what's there and uh, maybe uh, some modifications. I could uh, put that together and get some more impact, uh, input and feedback. Uh, from it. So if, if that's uh, what you recommend, that's, that's exactly what I'll do. Um, and uh, I know it's late. Do you want me to continue on or are we good for tonight or? I think we're good. Yeah, I yeah. would say we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, great. Uh, I appreciate the uh, input and your patience. Uh, and Peter did a great job bringing that up. So Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. All right, uh, public communications? None? Peter, Linda, none? Nope. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes from June 16th, 2020. I move to approve. Second. Uh, roll call, all in favor, Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Summers? Epstein. Okay. Minutes are approved. Uh, any old business? No. Any new business? I just think the mortgage or whatever that company is, they're going to have to work on that sign. The movement mortgage or the Century 21? The century, the whole, the whole thing. I mean, I, I didn't like it in the beginning, and I, I really don't like it now. Yeah, right. You um, mean from the first one approved, Eric? 
I didn't like the first one that was approved. That was the first meeting I was at. Um, and I, I especially don't like what turned out to be kind of a tacky billboard, in my opinion. I think I would just only comment because I didn't recall what the first one looked like till it was called out. But I thought the design of the first sign with the posts inward from the outside edge was actually a better looking design sign than what she ended up with, which was a more conventional sign with the posts. That, that I would blanking. agree with. Yeah. yeah. You know, came up kind of one third of the way across. I think it, it lightened up the overall effect of the sign. But um, as you, I think what you're pointing out is, is that if you add all these signs up together, it is one pretty massive piece of signage. And what was her point about the font? Like, why can't the fonts match? There's some kind of... Uh... I think she was making the argument that the fonts are corporate fonts. They're they're trademarked, but I don't. I mean, I'm sure that's probably the case for the Century Twenty One one, and maybe even perhaps the shutters and sales. But the vacation home and the commercial real estate didn't seem to be tied to a particular company, so I'm not sure if that was actually the case. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a legitimate point that the fonts could probably all be the same. And I also think we commented earlier that she's got shutters and sales. Or maybe it was maybe shutters and sales only actually appeared at the bottom on that shutters and sales vacation rental. I think at one point it shutters and sales appeared twice. No, it, it is twice. She has it on the top and then she has it on the bottom. Right. So I think we kind of thought it was redundant on the bottom. I mean, she clearly makes some of the signs a little smaller if she takes some of the language. Yeah, just two comments is one, I mean, just because the stuff's trademark doesn't force us to allow them to recreate it in the exact font and no, no, no that was just her argument yeah and no i agree and then the second part is when coldwell banker did the sign the wood sign that they had in front of the old three water street building that didn't match their logo at all it was just a carved sign <laughs> right right but i think i mean i don't have a i mean i think that if they if they if they want to use their the century 21 logo i mean that was a newly designed logo when she first came out with it i certainly wouldn't object to or using that again. Um, no, mean, there's a quaint. It is a brand, it's a branding exercise, right? So. Yeah. But to, but to have, uh, uh, it reminds me of when Max first came out and people used a different font for every line. Um, and it looks like, it looks like a sign at an industrial park where there's four different tenants in a building and they each have their own sign. Yeah, I agree. Exactly what it looks like. Bad look. The other thing is that they put that movement mortgage one at the bottom, you're not going to see it anyways because the grass is going to be so tall. Except it's red. Can't miss it. Well, that's only because they don't cut the grass here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, any anything else? No? All right. It's late. I'll move to adjourn. Second. All right, we're adjourned. Good nice to see you, Mark. Mark. Nice to see you, Mark. Yeah. Hey, hey, Peter, can I steal you for one minute? Sure, let me shut off everything for live recording here. Bye.